what's up guys sorry the lighting is crap anyways um we'll be building building i guess a beta tank so let's get into the video okay so first you want to start out with substrate okay so now when thinking about tank size a lot of people like to go by the German standards, which is a 10 gallon tank for a single beta. The US standards is two and a half gallons, which is really not enough room for a full grown beta or beta, however you like to say it. Um, yeah, it's really not good for them. And it's not good for them because it causes so many health issues and that usually leads to a dead beta. Okay, so with the sand, you wanna wash it out really well before you put it in your tank and so as you can probably tell I'm using sand but I'm also going to use some gravel because you can probably see this isn't enough sand. I personally like sand but gravel works well too. It's just I find a little harder to clean. So let's get the rest of the substrate in. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I don't know why I did this yet, yeah, but I did, so yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna kinda cut everything in. This is just play sand, it's cheaper than regular. You just wanna have to wash it out a lot better than regular sand. There, so that looks bad. Just kidding, it looks fine. Okay, I'm gonna make it look a little bit better. Actually, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit more. Also, if you're wondering what this is, it's just a piece of bamboo root. Okay, okay, so now it's time for the fun part, adding in the decorations. So you can have as much fun of, as this as you want. You just want to remember not to make it too crowded because you want your beta slash beta to have a lot of fun, um, but yet have room to swim. So maybe some fake plants, some real plants, a hide, something like that will do. I think this tank looks pretty good so far. Um, now I think all I need to do is add the water. So um, I'm also thinking about adding some shrimp in here too. Um, but I have to research more about potatoes and shrimp before I do that. Um, but yeah, right now I think this looks pretty good. So I'm, it's time to add the water. The water is being added in. If you see it looks kind of foggy, it's going to do that at first because all the sand gets turned up and everything. I don't even know if you can hear me right now over the water, but you know what? It's time to go check and add more water and then we will do a little bit of a water change to get some of the extra minerals out. Okay, so the, as the water is settling, I will show you uh the rest of the stuff so next you'll want to add in a filter make sure oh shoot this is the bad filter well it's not the bad one it just gets stuck really you just make sure that you have one that the beta won't get sucked into like a little piece in the bottom because then you'll lose your beta if it gets sucked into the filter i mean yeah it'll probably die anyways um that's on a more happy note Let's continue the video. So I just add, of course, if you, you'll probably all know how to set up a filter, but whatever. <laughs> Apparently I don't, because that did not fit. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, you just want to put in your filter. And then next up, you will want to add in your heater. Yay. Um, so that's so not yay-like. Okay, and then, so you they are tropical fish, so you will want them to have water 75 through like 80 is what I do usually. I set mine on 75, and it gets the water nice and warm because they are tropical fish, and that's what they need. So, yeah. Sorry about the buzzing. Anyways, if you do not have a filter, that is really bad because your beta 
we'll get something that is called fin rot yeah it's really bad it literally well it is what it sounds like it rots away the fins when there's not enough water changes and if they're in too small of a space um and if there's no filter pretty much then this will happen to their fins like pretty much unless you change their water like a bunch every week and um so yeah it's deadly to betas and so if you don't want a dead beta just easy just get a filter they're they make them pretty cheap you want this not this because this not healthy the other one i showed you the purpley one was and if you have too small of a tank uh quite frankly your beta will probably not make it and it won't be happy at all it will look something like this um depending on what color your beta is and it probably would have fin rot too if you didn't have a filter but like it showed in the picture but if you just don't want a dead beta get a big tank they're cheap Next up, if your beta doesn't have a heater, it will be cold, and it'll look something maybe like this, or it'll just be like really cold, and if it's too cold, then it will die, and um, just get a heater if you want your beta to live, like, um, you don't want, don't get a beta if you yeah, just want it to die. Pretty high quality stuff, just kidding. Um, yeah, so a little bit more on just general care needs for your beta. So we already went over heater, filter, and all this stuff for the tank. Now it's maintenance and keeping up with it. Um, obviously, your beta needs food. And um, I used to feed every other day two pellets, but now I'm feeding two to three every day. So um, I think my beta likes that a little more. Some people go a week without feeding. Um, some days I'll just go one day without feeding because then that gives them time to like go through all their food and um, and then the next day they get fed and then same schedule like um, so yeah uh, you can do a little more research if you want to find out better ways to feed but two to three pellets every day works just really well and so does two pellets every other day and yeah now let oh god the lighting's even worse over here now let's talk about tank mates for your beta so your beta does not want tank mates it probably it'll either not like them or not care about them and uh my number one recommendation would be mystery snails if you want to add just a little extra color or something alive in the tank but if you have a two and a half gallon or a five gallon even though i said those aren't really great but it's okay if you a five gallons okay but um if you still want to add tank mates to your 10 and over tanks, then, um, well, you wouldn't want to add any in the five gallon. I just said yeah, that. Yeah, so some of the best tank mates are shrimp, quarry catfish, and mystery snails. I don't know much about quarry catfish or um, shrimp, but I know mystery snails. They just think it's like some weird blob on the side of the glass or something. And they are good with those. They don't really care about them. They don't... Your beta won't interact with it, obviously, or any other animal. And the tetras will maybe nip at their fins, and the guppies might compete for food. But do your own research if you want to add a little more life into your beta tank, especially if you've got like a 20-gallon tank just for your beta. Then I would recommend maybe adding a little extra, but it's completely up to you. Um... You don't have to, obviously, isn't that what completely up to you means anyways. Um, yeah, let's see, let's get our beta adjusted into in the a few water. hours. I just put the beta in the jar so it can get used to its water. Um, it's still a little foggy, as you can see, but it's clearing up really well. And I think the heat is right. I just want the water in there to be the same temperature. And out here, so when I pour it in, then the beta gets used also, to it. Also, one last thing is that if you are wanting to grow live plants in your beta's aquarium slash tank, um, then I would recommend getting a light if so you want them to grow. My beta tank doesn't actually have a light because it has semi-direct sunlight, and I chose bamboo, which doesn't need a whole lot of light. And I kind of have mine in the perfect spot where... It's not too much light coming through, but it gets just enough for the plants and for the beta to thrive.
So just keep that in mind if you are keeping your tank in a shady spot or if you're not, um, then a light will really help.